When producer Britt Oldcroft and director David Mitten created the TV series Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, it was questioned how long each episode should run for. After all, the episodes were only based on short stories from the books. The runtime of 4 minutes and 30 seconds was decided somewhere in its production history. Now, Britt and David could have decided to change the length once series 5 came around, but they clearly felt comfortable writing in this style, as the show remained that way until their departure after season 7. Now, with a new company in charge of this show about talking trains, Hit Entertainment decided the show needed a longer runtime so it could fit a 10 minute slot on TV. And so, episodes were extended to 7 minutes for series 8 to 12. Unfortunately, these seasons suffered with basic writing and lack of character development, only making the 7 minute episodes suffer with a longer runtime. This continued into the CGI era with episodes being extended to 8 minutes and 45 seconds, and series 13 to 16 suffered the same consequences the hit era had been facing. This all changed when a gentleman named Andrew Brenner came into the picture in 2013 with the release of series 17. Andrew Brenner had been appointed as head writer of the current show. It was clear the new team behind the show could tell it had lost its roots, and the journey to making Thomas get back on track began. However, episodes had to remain at the 8 minute 45 mark, and the team sure gave their best go at making these extended episodes feel like the Brett Oldcroft era. However, there is one episode that sticks out in my mind at doing this most accurately, and no, it's not the Small Railway Engines episodes. That story goes to Love Me Tender. It goes without saying, but Series 20 really was the peak of the CGI era, and to be a Thomas fan at this time felt incredible. Sure, there are a few duds suited towards children, but the majority do try to recapture what I would call true Thomas. I mean, this season was filled with gems like Henry Gets the Express and Blown Away. But Love Me Tender goes that little bit further, and let's dive into it. Love Me Tender was written by Davy Moore, who had a great handful of stories up until this point. The story follows two characters who hadn't managed to have a spotlight episode in the CGI era yet, which was Donald and Douglas. The episode focuses on the two twins working to clear snow, which was something that was already established in season 2. I was thrilled when I saw this, I always thought a solo episode of them working in these type of conditions could work. The introduction to this story already starts with great chemistry, establishing that whilst brothers, these two twins will regularly argue like all brothers do. Once the snow comes, it is clear whoever is moving forward has the power over their actions, causing more stress for the other twin. For the majority, Donald holds this power, heading towards the east side of the island, with Douglas getting more infuriated and eventually deciding not to talk. Now, I want to talk about tension in this episode, as I think it's the most important aspect about it. Tension can be a great thing to make a viewer feel on edge, or concerned events may not pan out as expected. I'll see you again in 25 years. The CGI era relied heavily on crashes to create dramatic tension. However, this episode, the tension is caused by a coupling snapping. It's very Audrey-esque and not overly dramatic. In fact, the tension doesn't really start until Donald is told by Thomas that he has his twins tender causing Donald to enter a state of panic as the snow begins to thicken and he can't see Douglas once he passes him. It's really simple writing, but so effective for these type of conditions. I love how Donald's mood instantly changes once he realises there's danger. It's that brotherly love that keeps the two together. The side characters in this episode are Toby and Thomas. At this point in the show, Thomas was shoehorned into every episode, as he is the title character. However, this episode does something unique where Donald mentions they should clear the line for Thomas way before he appears in the episode. We should stay on the main line and clear the line for Thomas. Making his introduction not too jarring and in your face. As for Toby, I'm really glad he was in this episode. He doesn't have that worried personality trait we've been seeing time and time again. He is just an old, humble soul. Whilst he never says anything wise, you can tell it's that old school Toby with his cheeky personality, especially when he says, suit yourself to Douglas. Okay, Douglas, if that's what you want. Toby doesn't care. If you won't take his help, sort it yourself. Real good character writing there. Obviously, the twins make up in traditional fashion, 
but it feels more earned in comparison to some other stories. Both realise the mistake of their squabble and are just glad to be back together. Their dialogue really feels like something from anywhere between seasons 2 and 4. They act mature about it, and rather than being upset and expecting a big apology, they just say their piece. In fact, their dialogue across the whole episode is very mature. It never talks down to you, it's just two brothers in a slightly heated situation. It's a real shame we never really got to see episodes like this again after season 20. Season 21 had some strong episodes, but it was obvious change was on the way, and more eccentric and comedic stories were replaced with these heartfelt ones. Merci beaucoup! <laughs> oh, well, 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 no problem. Merci beaucoup to you, Daisy! <laughs> and this being the lead up to Big World Big Adventures. In conclusion, the episode is the closest we got to a classic era story again. Its characters, story, and most importantly, believability, really made this feel like a real railway again. You could slap this anywhere between seasons 2 and 5, and I honestly wouldn't mind the drastic switch in animation, as the story is that strong, and that is why I believe this was the one time the CGI series replicated the golden era of Thomas. And I don't think we'll ever see anything like it again. Thank you all so much for watching, this is something relatively new to my channel, and if it does well, I may consider doing more. I'd also like to say a big thanks for 7,000 subscribers, we finally got there, and now we're on the road to 10,000. Thank you very much for watching, please subscribe, leave a comment, and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.